that seems to me is quite true. A lot of men who are a little bit afraid of uh, Betty Bacall because of your success and your Well, I mean, Matt, you see, I, that's you their problem. It. I can't deal with that. I, you say I, mean, uh, I don't understand it. So I figure that a, a man who will say he's afraid, he's afraid of what he thinks. He's not afraid of what he knows. I mean, if, if a man has decided that I am a certain kind of woman without finding out what kind of woman I am, then, I mean, I wouldn't care, I'd be interested anyway, you know. But, I mean, if a man will take me as I am, I am human, after all. Uh, as I say, if he's sure of what he is, there's not a problem. And if you communicate with someone, you do. But, I mean, if you, anyone's uh, afraid of me, it's too yeah, boring. You don't make any bones about uh, talking about that situation and saying in some of your writings that you have sat by the telephone many and many an hour waiting for it to ring and it oh, never yeah. did. Oh, I've yeah. Been, I've been doing that most of my life. <laughs> I expect to continue doing it. <laughs> <laughs> or else hoping it would. Betty, you play another role, more important, I would presume, as the mother of three wonderful children, and the youngest yeah. of whom is now 19, I think. No, Sam? 22. Sam is 22. Please. My, how the years have flown. Oh. How do you handle your children now, being uh, occupied as you are? Well, or? unfortunately, I don't handle them. They handle themselves. Right. Uh, they're all uh, grown, and they uh, are all dealing very well with their lives. They've all had problems, as you cannot live and not have problems. Uh, but they have uh, risen above them, and at this moment, I can honestly say that they are all, I guess, in better shape than they've ever been in. I think they all feel that they have somewhere to go, that they, uh, they have a goal, they each have a goal, and they're all terrific. They're really terrific people. I mean, I respect them all, and I like them all, and they like each other, which I care about very much, and they're, uh, I just feel very good about it. Of course, I don't see very much of them, I mean, when I'm touring, we, Sam came to spend Thanksgiving with me, and Steve was in Washington just now when I was there for a few days. And Leslie was in California all the time I was there, so I did get a chance to spend quite a bit of time with her. I talk to Leslie, I guess, more regularly than I do to girls talk together, you know, which is nice. Um, and she's a wonderful, wonderful young woman. Did they have trouble, two of them having the name of Bogart, one having the name of Robart, all famous names in the acting fraternity? I think they all have had them? problems with that. I think that I always felt that Steve had the greater problem. Uh, I perhaps was unfair uh, to Leslie in my thinking that, but I felt that being the, a boy and being eight years old instead of four as she was, uh, was more difficult for him and also all through prep school and everything. It was, are you really Humphrey Bogart's son? And I think it was very hard for him. And I think it's taken him a long time and I think he now is as he gets older, he comes to, uh, to grips with it in a much healthier way. And I think he now is, I mean, he's always had pride in his father, but it's been hard for him to, I should say. he's been trying to figure out his own life, you know, so it's tough. But I think they all have, and I think they all, Sam had a, had a problem. He never was sure, as Sam is the only one who's an actor. I think Sam never really was sure whether he was an actor or was chosen because of Jason and me or because of himself, and there's that. And now he's, he's come to terms with that, and he feels much more secure, and he has more confidence in himself. We all are victims of, of insecurity, you see. I mean, that's my problem. It's Jason's. It's, it's, we all have it. Why do you feel insecure with all the success you've had? Success doesn't mean anything, Cap. Success is very fleeting. As I say, success, yeah, even I, if you have success, say I'm successful now, I still have to prove myself again the next time mean, out. I mean, that's the way it is. Yeah. That's just the name of the game. It's the name of the, the business that we're in. Um, uh, there is no, you can't say, well, I'm successful and that's it. Everything's going to be, you know, uh, lollipops and rainbows. You're as good as your long. last show, so to speak. Well, uh, your last anything. And uh, we all have life's problems that we deal with. And, uh, I mean, we're no different from anyone else. And sometimes our problems are greater. We have a, uh, I mean, I feel we have a big privacy problem. I feel that we, uh, I think people in my profession have no protection. And I think uh, it's something we, we're going to have to fight for. And I think we deserve it. We should have it. Protection, you mean from the media, mostly? I mean from, in, from the use of, from the commercializing of our personas. Uh, 
by, I'm not talking about columns, I'm not talking about even books, which I don't approve of, but which I don't think you can stop. But I think, uh, I think that for a network to be able to dramatize your life, as they did bogeys in my life without my consent, and they were all, it was all You wrong. had no voice whatsoever No in voice, that? no voice at all. No control, and I couldn't stop it. I mean, I felt that that was absolutely inexcusable and horrendous. And I, now, on the same and, line, you know that Elizabeth Taylor thought that she was going to be treated that way. Yes, but I she, didn't know about it ahead of time. She, she fought it, yeah. Yes, but she knew about it enough ahead of time, and she was right, absolutely yeah. right. I mean, if we don't have control over our own lives, what rights do we have? as citizens. Well, you do sacrifice some when you become a star and you belong to the public. No, we don't belong to the public. Why do you think we sacrifice? We, because you are a person of, person of great uh, interest to the public. You become established in your field. But that has nothing to the, do with my private life. But publicity is what helped make you great and consequently Not publicity you, about my private life, though. That has to belong to me. My own life has to belong to me. If well, I go fine, out to a restaurant... It's a very fine line with no, your private I, life. No, if I go out in public, no. My private life is my personal private life. And I have the right to privacy. When I became an actress, I did not sign a paper saying I relinquish my rights of privacy. And if I go to an opening or if I go to a restaurant, I, I mean, anyone can write what they want to write. I, then I'm out in public. But if I'm walking down the street myself, and if I'm going into my apartment, I don't think anyone has the right. Yeah, I agree with you there. To comment? But there is a fine line that we all have to walk, walk very well, carefully. Well, it's not, it's, it's not cared for enough, I'll tell you. And I really, I really, uh, I mean, if I want to exploit myself, of, that's my business. Well, I have, well, of course, CBS, I've told you, it was number one, the... Uh, I'm talking more about in the press, though. That People and, violate your privacy in the press. Uh, yes. The, well, the number one, by printing where I live, I would say that's an enormous violation, just for openers. I don't think, how dare anyone do that? I don't understand that. Uh, and people, uh, I mean, I think the use of bogey from the day he died to sell things. I mean, if you walk into a, into a record shop, you will see him holding a Maxell tape. Yeah, isn't that terrible? I don't is that not disgusting and shocking? Maxell tapes did not exist 27 years yeah. ago, did they? And these imitations of Bogey and Charlie Chaplin and other people you see on the commercial I don't understand I how they get very, away with Chaplin very, because I, under I understood terrible. that Chaplin had a copyright on that, the little tramp. I don't know how they can uh, do that. IBM does that. We know Chaplin. He probably had everything copyrighted. Well, he, he was right. <laughs> he was absolutely right, but it didn't do him any look. Yeah. If they do it, they figure until they get caught. See, I, I'm, I'm absolutely against that use. I think it's wrong. Let me take you to another area in which you were very prominent. You do commercials now. There was a time when most actresses looked down upon commercials, most actors. And then suddenly they were all doing them. Was it because the money was so great or because there was recognition that it's perfectly all right well, to do Well, it's acceptable. I, I mean, there, there always was the uh, theory years ago that when Larry Olivier did it, it was okay for Everybody. all actors to do it. But his were not shown in England, you remember? No, right, right. Did it but for, they were shown yeah. uh, in America. Yeah. I think that, I think that, again, that's a very individual choice. I think if it's a product that you uh, believe in and have respect for, and if it's tastefully well done, I think it's great to do it. Why not? I mean, I think well, if I can help a product and the product can help sure. me, yeah. I mean, first of all, the, I only do one national uh, commercial, which is High Point Coffee. And I do it because I, I really think it is We've good. We've been trying to get you and Joe DiMaggio together for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> He's on the wrong side. Forget it. Uh, Betty, there is a time uh, for many actors and actors who have uh, no work, who the commercials have been a godsend for. And well, I mean, we, still, we do have revenue. to pay bills. You know, what the hell we have? I still have uh, to pay my mortgage and uh, have to eat. And if I don't work for a few months, it's wonderful to know that I, I have Absolutely. that. I mean, I don't see why. Well, I don't think I should. And I don't think any of us have to apologize for anything we do like that. I think it's absolutely acceptable. Let me take you to another quick area because time is running short. Because we're so uh, fast. When you left the show and, huh? 
because we're so fascinating, I said. <laughs> when you left, you're fascinating. When you left the show, Raquel Welch was one of those who succeeded you. And there were all kind of reports that you and Raquel didn't get along. You refused to pose for a picture with her. We started a whole rhubarb. I'm was afraid there any was, feeling between no, you and Raquel? No, 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 there was no feeling as far as I'm concerned. I mean, she had, she has publicity people that, that work for her nonstop. I do not. I, and actually in New York in that though? show, no, no. In that show in New York, what bugged me about the show in New York was that the publicity people that worked on the show worked against me and not for me. Oh. Had nothing to do with anybody else. Um, and uh, I mean, as far as uh, Welch or anyone else being in it, I don't, I mean, that's not my problem. And I don't want to, I mean, to make it a personal thing is a very, it's not the way I've lived my yeah. life. I don't, I don't have few. Let me change the subject to something that I think is very important in your life and to many yeah. of us, the status of the Broadway theater. And yeah. many of us are very concerned. Even the New York Times had a piece the other day saying that where the action is in the theater, it's in Chicago, with all the great regional theater developing here and going on to Broadway in many cases, young playwrights like David Mamet and so forth right. bringing yes. shows. And Broadway apparently has outpriced itself. Nobody can afford to take a chance and risk a new show show because the price is exorbitant and they can't... But it's uh, very expensive to put on a show. Yes, you know? I mean. Uh, I mean, the New York Times, I don't think, has been uh, has been very constructive about Broadway, I must tell you, for, for the last several years. But I believe that uh, I think it is a problem. I think the Broadway theater is difficult because of the cost of producing a show to begin with. And I think tickets are so high now that it just... I mean, you know, everything has escalated while uh, Reagan is talking about how... Uh, the economy is in great shape. He forgets that because everything is so expensive yeah. and uh, it's so expensive to run a show that tickets have to be higher. Who the hell can go and pay $45 a ticket? I mean, it's insane. I think it's, it's awful and I think it's, uh, our playwrights are not encouraged. I think one of the great problems in America is that we do not have a subsidized theater, that our playwrights are not encouraged and that we do not have uh, a chance that we do not give them an opportunity for growth and expansion. And there is no room for experimentation in our theater. Would you like to see a national that theater? It, absolutely. Like well, listen, a, Jason started it. Yeah. When Lincoln Center began, he was, he was the one who started it, and then they made it commercial. And then he left it. He started it. He wanted there to be an American repertory company, a national company. But there was, there, I mean... There, there, there again, commercialism got into the way. Right. And yeah. so, I mean, actors, you will always find actors who are willing to go for a national theater. Mm -hmm. And you will seldom find producers that are. And that's, I think, therein lies some of the problem. Yeah. And the government, of course, doesn't seem to give a damn, so we don't get much help. Betty, I can't begin to th tell you how much I enjoyed our renewing an old friendship be with you again. My pleasure. And I'd like to remind the folks that she's only here for one more week, I think. You're March 4th. March we 4th, close March 4th. And you're depriving yourself of a great, great show if you miss Woman of the Year with Betty Bacall. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Sarah. Thanks, Cal. We'll be right back with our other guests. Mm -hmm.